An exomorn or extrasolar moon is a natural satellite that orbits an exoplanet or other non-stellar extrasolar body. It is inferred from the empirical study of natural satellites in the solar system that they are likely to be common elements of planetary systems. The majority of detected exoplanets are giant planets. In the solar system, the giant planets have large collections of natural satellites, see moons of Jupiter, moons of Saturn, moons of Uranus and moons of Neptune. Therefore, it is reasonable to assume that exomoons are equally common. Though exomoons are difficult to detect and confirm using current techniques, observations from missions such as Kepler have observed a number of candidates, including some that may be habitats for extraterrestrial life and one that may be a rogue planet. To date there are no confirmed exomorn detections. <laughs> Definition of satellites around brown dwarfs Although traditional usage implies moons orbit a planet, the discovery of planet-sized satellites around brown dwarfs blurs the distinction between planets and moons, due to the low mass of such failed stars. To resolve this confusion, the International Astronomical Union declared, objects with true masses below the limiting mass for thermonuclear fusion of deuterium, that orbit stars or stellar remnants, are planets. Characteristics Characteristics of any extrasolar satellite are likely to vary, as do the solar system's moons. For extrasolar giant planets orbiting within their stellar habitable zone, there is a prospect a terrestrial planet-sized satellite may be capable of supporting life. <laughs> Orbital inclination For impact-generated moons of terrestrial planets not too far from their star, with a large planet-moon distance, it is expected that the orbital planes of moons will tend to be aligned with the planet's orbit around the star due to tides from the star, but if the planet-moon distance is small it may be inclined. For gas giants, the orbits of moons will tend to be aligned with the giant planet's equator because these formed in circumplanetary disks. Lack of moons around planets close to their stars Planets close to their stars on circular orbits will tend to despin and become tidally locked. As the planet's rotation slows down the radius of a synchronous orbit of the planet moves outwards from the planet. For planets tidally locked to their stars, the distance from the planet at which the moon will be in a synchronous orbit around the planet is outside the Hill sphere of the planet. The Hill sphere of the planet is the region where its gravity dominates that of the star so it can hold on to its moons. Moons inside the synchronous orbit radius of a planet will spiral into the planet. Therefore, if the synchronous orbit is outside the Hill sphere, then all moons will spiral into the planet. If the synchronous orbit is not three-body stable then moons outside this radius will escape orbit before they reach the synchronous orbit. A study on tidal-induced migration offered a feasible explanation for this lack of exomoons. It showed the physical evolution of host planets, i.e., interior structure and size, plays a major role in their final fate. Synchronous orbits can become transient states, and moons are prone to be stalled in semi-asymptotic semimior axes, or even ejected from the system, where other effects can appear. In turn, this would have a great impact on the detection of extrasolar satellites. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Proposed detection methods. The existence of exomoons around many exoplanets is theorized. Despite the great successes of planet hunters with Doppler spectroscopy of the host star, exomoons cannot be found with this technique. This is because the resultant shifted stellar spectra due to the presence of a planet plus additional satellites would behave identically to a single point mass moving in orbit of the host star. In recognition of this, there have been several other methods proposed for detecting exomoons, including direct imaging. Microlensing, pulsar timing, transit timing effects, transit method. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Direct imaging. Direct imaging of an exoplanet is extremely challenging due to the large difference in brightness between the star and exoplanet, as well as the small size and irradiance of the planet. These problems are greater for exomoons in most cases. 
However, it has been theorized that tidally heated exomoons could shine as brightly as some exoplanets. Tidal forces can heat up an exomorn because energy is dissipated by differential forces on it. Io, a tidally heated moon orbiting Jupiter, has volcanoes powered by tidal forces. If a tidally heated exomorn is sufficiently tidally heated and is distant enough from its star for the moon's light not to be drowned out, it would be possible for future telescopes such as the James Webb Space Telescope to image it. Topic: <laughs> Doppler spectroscopy of host planet. Doppler spectroscopy is an indirect detection method that measures the velocity shift and results stellar spectrum shift associated with an orbiting planet. This method is also known as the radial velocity method. It is most successful for main sequence stars. The spectra of exoplanets have been successfully partially retrieved for several cases, including HD 189733 b and HD 209458 b. The quality of the retrieved spectra is significantly more affected by noise than the stellar spectrum. As a result, the spectral resolution, and number of retrieved spectral features, is much lower than the level required to perform Doppler spectroscopy of the exoplanet. <laughs> Detection of radio wave emissions from the magnetosphere of host planet During its orbit, Io's ionosphere interacts with Jupiter's magnetosphere, to create a frictional current that causes radio wave emissions. These are called Io-controlled decametric emissions and the researchers believe finding similar emissions near known exoplanets could be key to predicting where other moons exist. Topic microlensing In 2002, Cheongho Han and Wonyong Han proposed microlensing be used to detect exomoons. The authors found detecting satellite signals in lensing light curves will be very difficult because the signals are seriously smeared out by the severe finite source effect even for events involved with source stars with small angular radii. <laughs> Pulsar timing In 2008, Lewis, Sackett, and Mardling of the Monash University, Australia, proposed using pulsar timing to detect the moons of pulsar planets. The authors applied their method to the case of PSR B 1620 26 b and found that a stable moon orbiting this planet could be detected, if the moon had a separation of about 1 50th of that of the orbit of the planet around the pulsar, and a mass ratio to the planet of 5% or larger. Transit timing effects In 2009, University College London-based astronomer David Kipping published a paper outlining how by combining multiple observations of variations in the time of mid-transit TTV, caused by the planet leading or trailing the planet-moon system's barycenter when the pair are oriented roughly perpendicular to the line of sight with variations of the transit duration TDV, caused by the planet moving along the direction path of transit relative to the planet-moon system's barycenter when the moon-planet axis lies roughly along the line of sight a unique exomorn signature is produced. Furthermore, the work demonstrated how both the mass of the exomorn and its orbital distance from the planet could be determined using the two effects. In a later study, Kipping concluded that habitable zone exomoons could be detected by the Kepler Space Telescope using the TTV and TDV effects. <laughs> Transit method When an exoplanet passes in front of the host star, a small dip in the light received from the star may be observed. The transit method is currently the most successful and responsive method for detecting exoplanets. This effect, also known as occultation, is proportional to the square of the planet's radius. If a planet and a moon passed in front of a host star, both objects should produce a dip in the observed light. A planet-moon eclipse may also occur during the transit, but such events have an inherently low probability. Topic. Orbital sampling effects If a glass bottle is held up to the light it is easier to see through the middle of the glass than it is near the edges. Similarly a sequence of samples of a moon's position will be more bunched up at the edges of the moon's orbit of a planet than in the middle. 
If a moon orbits a planet that transits its star then the moon will also transit the star and this bunching up at the edges may be detectable in the transit light curves if a sufficient number of measurements are made. The larger the star the greater the number of measurements are needed to create observable bunching. The Kepler spacecraft data may contain enough data to detect moons around red dwarfs using orbital sampling effects but won't have enough data for Sun-like stars. Candidates It has been surmised that the star 1 SWASP J140747.93 to 394542.6, in the constellation Centaurus, might have a planet with a moon. The confirmed extrasolar planet WASP 12b may also possess a moon. In December 2013, a candidate exomorn of a free floating planet MOA 2011 BLG 262 was announced, but due to degeneracies in the modeling of the microlensing event, the observations can also be explained as a Neptune mass planet orbiting a low mass red dwarf, a scenario the authors consider to be more likely. This candidate also featured in the news a few months later in April 2014. In October 2018, researchers using the Hubble Space Telescope published observations of the candidate exomorn Kepler 1625bi, which suggest that the host planet is likely several Jupiter masses, while the exomorn may have a mass and radius similar to Neptune. The study concluded that the exomorn hypothesis is the simplest and best explanation for the available observations, though warned that it is difficult to assign a precise probability to its existence and nature. Topic List Topic Detection Projects As part of the Kepler mission, the Hunt for Exomoons with Kepler project is intended to detect exomoons. Topic Habitability Habitability of exomoons has been considered in at least two studies published in peer reviewed journals. René Heller and Rory Barnes considered stellar and planetary illumination on moons as well as the effect of eclipses on their orbit average surface illumination. They also considered tidal heating as a threat for their habitability. In SECT, 4 in their paper, they introduce a new concept to define the habitable orbits of moons. Referring to the concept of the circumstellar habitable zone for planets, they define an inner border for a moon to be habitable around a certain planet and call it the circumplanetary habitable edge. Moons closer to their planet than the habitable edge are uninhabitable. In a second study, René Heller then included the effect of eclipses into this concept as well as constraints from a satellite's orbital stability. He found that, depending on a moon's orbital eccentricity, there is a minimum mass for stars to host habitable moons at around 0.2 solar masses. Taking as an example the smaller Europa, at less than 1% the mass of the Earth, Lamer et al. found if it were to end up near to Earth orbit it would only be able to hold onto its atmosphere for a few million years. However, for any larger, Ganymede-sized moons venturing into its solar system's habitable zone, an atmosphere and surface water could be retained pretty much indefinitely. Models for moon formation suggest the formation of even more massive moons than Ganymede is common around many of the super Jovian exoplanets. Like an exoplanet, an exomorn can potentially become tidally locked to its primary. However, since the exomoon's primary is an exoplanet, it would continue to rotate relative to its star after becoming tidally locked, and thus would still experience a day night cycle indefinitely. See also Exocomet, a comet outside the Solar System EXOPLANETKEPLER 46 An old star with a planetary system Minor planet Moon, also known as Asteroid Moon, a natural satellite of a minor planet Natural satellites of the Solar System, astronomical body that orbits a planet Subsatellite, also known as Moonmoon, a satellite that orbits a natural satellite <laughs>